ఈ సోట కేసు పల్లి కంది వాజ్ వన్ మౌలు దీస్ రిసైటెడ్ ఎలాంగ్ రోడ్ దే గెట్ అప్ అండ్ రిసైట్ అప్ ఫదర్ సో వాట్ వాజ్ ఇట్ లైక్ the school uh, and the culture and the teaching and the parambadi and all that is that akurna was the almost the single village that was there yeah. okay. so uh, how did they manage to do man called uh, shiram looked the mobs that were attacking ambate yeah. heard this and they were yeah. tell me a bit about how akurna people did their businesses some yes. stories so yeah. Yeah. people were warning lot of people yes yeah. we had petty fields yeah. now petty fields were playing two 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 roles okay you know? okay it's called under sister under under sister okay. in one courageous man goes and you know yeah. the, the put that fellow down yeah. they can write tamil in arabic yeah. you can read tamil in arabic it was called pachu sir because he was a ardent you and so what did you mood came when he was minister he came in search of him okay. and gave him a jp ship and what did and he thought he is the king of uh, gunigoda right he yes, started yeah. to establish rule yeah rule in gurugula courts the police and they release transit for it he had a very good connection here yeah akur and gurugula courts the now where was bed even in those days so much so we used to call that as a joke you know we used to call that the mami beach Thank you so much for joining the program. I am going to interview someone very special today. Uh, someone in Akurana who is a very special person. He is uh, experienced uh, a lot in all walks of life. And then I have known this person for quite some time as well. Uh, and that is uh, Mr. Mansoor Raza. Brother Mansoor, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Okay let's uh, let's start from your beginning yeah. so you were born in Akurna yes first thing that comes to mind is Akurna was a very very lush country when i was when we were young lot of streams water cascading everywhere birds and that kind of natural thing which we really miss today right you find the most of the thing, places where the water was running are dry now He also had a lot of other springs. Water yes, everywhere. everywhere, yes. That's what I told you that from yeah. the beginning you get uh, this water running everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still I have the memory. Mm-hmm. Opposite our house, on the other side, there is a thing called uh, Pelikan. Pelikan, yes. A large yes. rock, large yeah. rock along that uh, the water cascades all the time. Mm-hmm. Without such noise all the time. Yeah. I am so used to that sound to sleep. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Also within Akurana alone well, now we have huge houses everywhere. Yeah. We have paddy fields. Yeah. Again partly to do with the water. Yes. Uh yeah, now, paddy fields were playing two 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 roles. One thing paddy fields there was water and also they were they were also acting during the floods these paddy fields were acting as a holding area for the water. yeah so the paddy fields get filled up and you have yeah. large the, there was a space especially the dunil road our our yeah. paddy field yeah you could see when there is a big flood the yeah. water goes into the paddy field yeah so the the flowing water is reduced yeah here. so there is time for that too yeah uh, oh, okay that okay yes, that's, so one the, that's one of the that's for another reason why the town yeah. is getting yeah. 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 for another thing because draining stuff, takes time yes. those days now it's very quite instant yeah yeah at the time you so you said you went to azar yeah. uh, to do your primary education yeah. so that was your first school second school i Akurna went to the balika first akurna balika so balika. that was established by rajik pari uh, yes and then you were early we went there yeah. for the first two years yeah you know our early learning is you know we used to write uh, on sand yeah alphabet was learned on sand, on sand. And yeah. feel the sand yeah. a raised table ah okay Okay. Uh, that is filled uh, that t- table is made to fill the sand oh, then okay. they fill the sand and keep and we go and write oh, with okay. our fingers okay okay uh, and the slates were also there slates were slates after yeah. first is this then the slates yeah. okay okay then the slates and slate pencils right. so in azar yeah. so what was it like the school uh, and the culture and the teaching and the yeah uh, the parambadi and all that yeah yeah there were few teachers who used to 
came, yeah. later on it was stopped. Yeah. Few teachers you so some, it was uh, fairly common getting uh, getting can yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, some were some teachers can you instinctively, some teachers have a system of caning. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are so notorious, yes. so unpopular with the and students. Also, children also don't keep quiet, you know. Yeah, they do. Some other teachers other are counter, sort counter. of hackled and yeah. Yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, interesting yeah. life, uh, yeah. caning. Yeah. 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 So, what were the other things like in the school? Say, caning is, it doesn't happen now, so yeah. it did. And, then and also, the teachers were quite authoritarian. Mostly authoritarian, but yeah. some were very persuasive yeah. and good teachers. Yeah. And uh, even I could see, you know, certain teachers can teach. There are certain teachers who can really motivate you. Yeah. Just the simple things they do and yeah. say. Yeah. You see, everybody thought uh, English is known among the Sinhalese uh, boys, called them Kaduva. Uh, even our boys, you know, they were scared of uh, English. Yeah. Even though we have had exposure, but yeah. still, you know, when you think of grammar and all that, we are yeah. a little scared about yeah. Uh, yeah. Then so we the Then we was a very interesting concept, uh, is it? Yeah. Even I remember hearing that. So, mm. so the analogy is like it's it's a weapon. It's a weapon. It's so difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. Uh, th that is where they get chopped off in the exams yeah. because you lose your English. <laughs> oh, okay. Tell me about your father. Yeah. My father was a businessman. What's his name? Uh, Abdul, Abdul Razak. Abdul Razak. Yeah, he was the leading businessman in Nakhorana. Yeah. Occupation was business. Yeah. Then we branched into, we branched into plantation, tea plantation mainly. Right. And uh, cardamom and rubber also. So your father had a shop in the bazaar? In the bazaar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that so was the leading shop. And yeah. uh, so the name of the name, of name was A. Mabdurazak and Brothers. Yeah. Uh, that was a multi product shop, you know, in the petroleum uh, delivery center and uh, uh, provisions, yeah. textile he was importing. Yeah. And uh, he had a pharmacy in the same building. Uh, in the same shop, there was a pharmacy. Pharmacy, as well. yes, so textile mm -hmm. one section, pharmacy, yeah. and then provision. So it's Peri called Peri Periacar. Peri Peri yes, okay. it was called Periacar. Right. And uh, he was doing wholesale and retail both. Okay. So, do you remember your father's early days? Like, have, have you been told about his childhood? Uh, yes. His childhood, uh, he started working very young. Right. Uh, his father died when he was only 30. Yeah. Then he had uh, to take the family responsibility, mm -hmm. so he went to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, he was uh, working for one of his uncle in his uh, hotel in mm -hmm. Mate mm -hmm. Then he started the business in Akurana mm -hmm. in, in a small way, and uh, became to be the almost the most leading businessman. A little bit deeper into the the day-to-day -day life, everyday life of people. Yeah, it was a very relaxed. Uh, village life yeah. and uh, no, not so many vehicles like this or not even uh, even on the Dumi road where we were living. Yeah. Uh, I can remember there were only three vehicles. In the whole village? The whole village, oh, yeah. uh, on that section and yeah. uh, there might have been a few here and there. So one belonged to your family? Uh, yeah, he had, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's funny, just to mention the value of money at that time. Yeah. My father had two cars, yeah. one was his own, yeah. when his father was dying, he gave his car to him yeah. uh, to sell that when needed and uh, he had the youngest son yeah. who was very small. That car, that was a Morris Minor, a gold model, yeah. he sold that car for 800 rupees. Right, right. Uh, because he had two cars and then... Yeah, yes, yeah, this one, was not yeah. really his, yeah. it was given to him yeah. uh, to be yeah. kept with him and uh, yeah. when the boy grows up to... Yeah. Him for so that, yeah. partly it is the power of our currency those days. Yes. Yeah. And also and then, the value. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think there were no taxation. Right. Uh, uh, I, I remember we bought a car, Fiat car, brand new, mini, yeah. brand factory fresh. Yeah. And uh, that was four Shri. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the year. Yeah. That car from the showroom was only fourteen thousand five hundred rupees. Right. Okay, let's talk about some of the new memories about 
customs and festivals and rituals. And yes, Akuruna had uh, many many rituals and customs in the yeah. sense. Pali mm -hmm. uh, country was once where the village was divided into several sections. Okay. In in this case, uh, twelve twelve different sections yeah. Yeah. called uh, yeah uh, Pagiti. Yeah, and uh, each section uh, people cook for the. Yeah, on, on a particular day, yeah. and send the meals, send some meals to the mosque. Yeah, they have they recite Molu and uh, divide it among the people who go there. Yeah, and so this uh, it was a very I would say was a very good arrangement. Yeah, for whatever reason they had I don't know they did the way with that. Uh, this was a system where it was easy to keep the family bond together. Yeah, because because it is done in one particular area. Every house have their kantu. Yeah. So you have no compulsion to invite your neighbors. Yeah. So you go in search of all your uh, relatives. Yeah. And they come. Yeah. So that was an annual event where yeah. people, right. uh, families can get together. Okay. Uh, I think it is a big loss for the village. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. For yeah. what I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There might have been some problem some compulsion on the poorer people to uh, do it uh, like the others do yeah. but overall it uh, it had the family bond together yeah uh, that f family bond is not there anymore uh, that, uh, that opportunity is not there yeah. because yeah. you know because the yeah. family is so grown so vast yeah you know weddings and all that it is difficult even to invite all your uh, all your family families you know? yeah. even yeah. cousins are sometimes left yeah. out yeah uh, but if it was the Pallikan Dure, then everybody yeah. was able to go. And also there was a, it was a duty like, you know, when you were invited to go. Because yeah. if you don't go to one invitation, you go there and invite for your Kandure. Yeah. And they won't. Okay. But everybody in the family is invited. Okay. Uh, okay. That is. Right. Then there was this Maulu every year, yeah. by in one month. Uh, yeah. where uh -huh. Most houses, they have this Maulu. Yeah. And that was also done away with. That one also was... Uh, done away with, you know, with the more uh, strict religious interpretation mm -hmm. and all, and there was opposition for that. Yeah. Uh, so the Maulu normally is held, that of course is uh, uh, optional, you know, you, you you have it or you do, people who are wealthy, they have it and yeah. then people go and there will be big meal, big get togethers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember my father, since he was the leading businessman in Akurana, mm -hmm. we had our Maulu every year. Yeah on account of the shop and uh, mm -hmm. the entire Akurana people were invited, okay. open. Mm -hmm. uh, even then, mm -hmm. uh, those days we cooked about, we had about uh, cauldrons, mm -hmm. 45 kilo, 45 measure cauldrons, mm -hmm. where you can cook 45 measure. Mm -hmm. We had three, only three or four cauldrons to cook. Okay. Uh, nowadays, in a wedding, you need about 20 wood uh, cauldrons to cook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the size of the village at that time. Yeah. And we used to go to invite. Yeah. And we we give an open invitation to everybody and come. Mm -hmm. uh, known people, or non known people, we don't know. Yeah. But they are all of the village. Yeah. So that was another thing. Yeah. Then uh, there was another thing called uh, Balikandu, okay. where Maulu is recited along a road, along the okay. village. Okay. It goes round and round the village. Yeah. And, you know, Bali Maulu. Bali Maulu. Bali Maulu. Yes. Right. yes, yes, yes. Yes, Bali Maulu. Okay. So it that happens was, at night. It happens in night and it's a yeah. lot of fun for the children. Yeah. They carry torches. Also yeah. these, uh, you know, pandam. Pandam, yeah. yeah sure, pandam. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, children have their fights and fun yeah. and all that. Weddings, weddings go the whole night. Yeah, you know the the groom travels the whole night. Even yeah. the bro they go, bride, they, uh, they, bride's house is next door. Yeah, they don't cross over to the next door. They go around the village. Oh, really? Yes, they go all around the village. Okay. And people receive them. Very often, yes. people receive yes. them. Yes. Give yeah. them, also, offer them a soft drink. You know, put yeah. the garland and yeah. things like that. Okay. So it's always. Uh, uh, Almost dawn by the yeah. time the groom reaches the yeah. right source. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so people at the time, yeah. that kind of. Uh, yeah, let's talk a bit more about weddings. Yeah. So, what are the other things that, you know, what, what else? Weddings, they used to have a lot of fireworks. Yes, fireworks. Fireworks. Okay. And also, when this procession goes, yeah. there will be other entertainment like Chinadi. 
ஒரு <laughs> so ah yes patika chenna you know, also especially in the mauru you know that is a very very special thing mm. they have a people who can they they call it padam the there are older people who who are very good at it yeah they get up and recite a padam or that's yeah. a poetry yeah. uh, lines of poetry yeah then you know the another person gets up and answers that then you know, in competition to that he so they have to do it spontaneously spontaneously they do that some right. are already known yeah. they do it yeah. then there are people who yeah. are very good at spontaneously, spontaneously. making responding yeah. Yeah. it in poetry yeah uh two important people i remember yeah. was dr mauro's father right and another was yeah. my uncle who was a yeah. po- former government servant he was a chief clerk to the right. british right. right. nur mohammed my uncle was he is known as by the whole village knows him as clarker mama clarker uh, yeah okay. he was so. chief clerk during the british time okay where yeah, did he live he he he's, he he was born in our parental house okay. my sister yeah. then he got married in bulgovatan no he built yeah. a house there early our early training in english was through him because he will always make it a point to speak to us in english right and correcting our english okay uh, i still remember the corrections he made so let's go back to some of the early memories that you were told say so what do you know about this 1915 riot yeah Well, like, Some stories, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the stories I heard of 1915, uh, at that time Akuna was uh, protected by the people. Yeah. The interesting part is that Akuna was the, almost the single village that was spared by, as far as I heard. Yeah. Uh, so there was no, no attack on Akuna? No, no okay. attack on Akuna. Okay. So, uh, how did they manage to do it? Uh, interesting story because mm. uh, people were guarding the village mm. uh, ladies were housed uh, separately to protect them and with uh, special arrangements uh, and uh, there was uh, i was told by my uncle that uh, there was a man called uh, shirank who was a contractor of uh, probably he was uh, uh, he was uh, trained in you know rock blasting and things like that Mm. so he concocted a homemade uh, bomb mm-hmm. and tested this uh, somewhere in a pit uh, on the main road mm-hmm. near the river and uh, at the time that uh, he tested it it made such a huge noise mm-hmm. that uh, mobs that were attacking ambathen yeah. heard this and they ran off in the testing alone testing alone they heard the noise this thing yeah. and that was only a testing yeah. but it was so I so loud so loud yeah uh, and uh, uh, and also i was told that you know the the single villages especially in our area yeah surrounded uh, surrounded yeah. the dunmilla dunmilla wallowa leaders and all that yeah they also came to the protection of muslims yeah tell me a bit about how akrona people did their businesses some yes. stories so yes when i was very young and when i was at my father's shop yeah uh, i had a visit to be at a visitor uh, a, a british student who had come to the peradin university and he was researching uh, but akurna peoples about akurna people and okay. he wanted to find out about what our people did okay so he came and he posed some questions and uh, most of our people they could understand some english yeah and others uh, not everybody can because yeah. i had heard the stories of how our people did business yeah. from my aunt you know my aunt who was a very vivid uh, storyteller business muslims were doing work a lot of people were doing work uh, they they go to jeffna to purchase cattle right so they do it by uh, when they do that they carry clothing they go right. to kalambu purchase clothing yeah. bring that yeah. and tie them on on either moors or even 
cattle which were yeah. on, on their so leg. So they, they were the transport. Tra yeah, place. that was the transport. That was the So main. they were walking with these uh, yeah. donkeys yeah. or other, yeah. yes. other cows or whatever. Yes. Not even carts. Not even carts, because you know they had to travel through jungles and places. Oh, yeah, there there are ups no and roads. downs. Yeah. Ups and downs, no roads. No roads. No roads. No roads. Most roads, yeah. roads yeah. were not there yeah. those yes. days. Okay. And they take this to Jaffna. Mm -hmm. It's a very adventurous uh, trade. Yeah. They they take this to Jaffna, mm -hmm. and they go and buy. On the way, they face many people, highway robbers, mm -hmm. uh, highwaymen, and. Uh, our other villagers who try to plunder these people, uh, thugs all along the way. Mm. They have to brace all this. Right. And uh, they go up to Jeffna. In Jeffna, the cattle was very cheap yeah. because uh, after using, because they don't slaughter cattle, yeah. they allow them to just uh, free ranch. Yeah. And they have a very little meal. Yeah. They are very thin, lean okay. animals. Bit like stray, like uh, uh, it's yeah. just like stray yeah, cattle, yeah, but yeah. they are owners because they are always yeah. marking. Yeah. So they go and uh, I was told that uh, the price of a cow or cattle mm -hmm. is the length of the cattle in the in clothes. Okay. They measure the cattle. And if it is two meter, yeah, two meter, two meter, whatever it is, they <laughs> two meter clothes, clothes and two meters. Yeah. Okay. Like that, you know, they yeah. camp there. Yeah. They collect uh, by start buying and yeah. they collect it for some time. Yeah, and they start driving back. Mm -hmm. Driving back the herd. Yeah. And actually, what reminded me was the mm -hmm. the, the the Western stories of mm -hmm. America, where the cow trading. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very similar to that when you yeah. when you really look at their okay. adventures. Okay. Uh, only thing is they were uh, had the horse riding and all that yeah, kind yeah, of thing, yeah. but yeah, they were walking so on their living thing, but yeah. they were facing the same kind of dangers. Okay. okay. And uh, while coming back, they go to find waterfalls, you know, where there is small lakes with the pasture land and all that. Yeah. And uh, it's called Kolatik uh, Madu Virgul. The term they yeah. use is Kolatik Madu Virgul. They put the cattle, graze the cattle around the lake yeah. as long as the pasture is available. They feed them. And while doing that, they do an additional business. Yeah. They, while they are waiting, they yeah. catch the uh, there are two kind fish. of uh, fish. dry fish yeah. that are very, very, very so tartar. soft tartar. Mm. Uh, that is iral and sugar. Okay. So while waiting for the, and they bundle them, they pack them on the. So they dry them, dry them and yeah. pack them. Yeah. Uh, dry in the sense, you know, I think they dry it on fire. Yeah. Yeah. No, and interesting uh, story. So they were the strategies because, uh, you know, at the same time. The majority Singhalese population, their businesses were like cultivation. Yes. Right? But our people were like mostly yeah, uh, they, caravans, yeah, caravaning. Yeah, yeah, the Muslim cultivators yeah. in the eastern province and yeah. all that, they had cultivators. Yeah, but, but here, yeah. even yeah. if there are some cultivators, they were yeah. case crop cultivators. Right. Not pedi and things like that. Okay. They have a lot of pedi field owners. We have yeah. people who are owning a lot of pedi fields. Yeah, landlords. They, yeah, yeah, landlords. But they were tilled by the uh, under holders. Oh, okay. This is a permanent uh, system, like oh, okay. you know. Okay. It's called under system. Under. Under system. Okay. Right. Uh, right. Right. Uh, are, so they get they a cultivation. Portion of, they get a portion, and then the landlord gets yes. another portion. And, uh, that also created in those days created a lot of bond within the with the single and oh, the Muslims, okay. Okay. which people don't understand. You know, they only look at the financial side of it. Yeah. Even financially, also they were much better off. Because if there is a landlord and if there is a person, I can still remember, our and the Govias, yeah. they come home for their any other emergencies and yeah. we help them. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. they will see some police yeah. sick and they will yeah. want money. And then we, see, we yeah. seek certain other help from them as yeah. well. We receive so go and seek out Veda Mahatya yes. and things like that. Yeah. Right? That kind so of thing. And that also reciprocity was there. Yeah, reciprocity was there. The close communication was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that has been cut off by Right, right. Maybe these are many points that has to be discussed. Yeah. This is one observation yeah. that I have about this. Right, right. Because every, even if it is a good thing, you know, there are a lot of uh, yeah. uh, uh, things that we have lost by all this, uh, right. everything like from Palikanduri to Molu to yeah. even to other system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Okay. Uh, that is how our people. Uh, the main businesses went on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, I think that practice came because yeah. of their the 
earlier system of uh, running car caravans between yeah. India yeah. and uh, Sri Lanka. Okay. So, through so overall, it seems we kind of as a community were risk, fairly risk taking. We took yeah, risk, risk, take, risk taking adventurous. Yeah. And also, yeah. while this was the social changes that happened while they were doing, there were many villages mm. or small towns. Say, when you say town, they are just uh, maybe one or two shops somewhere. Where there were there were thugs who were ruling these areas. Ganangario. Ganangario. Mm -hmm. So the whole villages were almost slaves to them. Yeah. They 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 they, they, they can make the villages do anything. Mm. So when the Muslims went, mm. when the Muslims were challenged, you know, they challenged them. Okay. Sure. You have any stories yes. about them? Yeah. 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 I have heard many stories about okay. that. You know, they go and clear a town, just like it happens in the westerns. Uh, a good gunman movies, and the movies, and cowboy yeah, movies, yeah. movies and stories. Yeah. Do you know any stories about? Yes, this there were many, many Akurna people. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They came live here later. Like when it happens, they go and clear a village, yeah. clear a town. On their way, they clear certain towns mm. and they establish a small shop there. Right. Then they, the, fe the villagers liked them a lot because, you know, these people were quite magnanimous with them. They give them loans, they, they, they bring produce and sell it at a low price. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the villagers, they bring their petty to them, yeah. they buy that. Yeah. But while they were cultivating, they would need money, investment. Yeah. So the investment these uh, businessmen give them. Yeah. Like that, you know, people establish businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And the villagers benefited by that. Yeah. And uh, uh, in, in, in most matters, we forget to see the good part of you know these changes. Yeah. Now, even now, even now, I have observed when the government says that they will buy the proper petty for a man to sell the proper petty, he has to hire vehicle, he has to buy the ganis, he has to carry it to the stores. Uh, it has to meet a certain particular standard. If it, it doesn't meet the standard, it is rejected. Now, when it, they do the business with the trader, he gives them a price. Always there is open competition. You know, you can't say that uh, actually the fi fixed price is a farce. I would say fixed price for petty is a farce because the fixed price is always lower than the market value. The trader buys it with the market value, but he also gives them a lot of benefits. He takes his ghanis, quite expensive to buy, uh, say, hundreds of ghanis for the villager. They, they take their ghanis, and also while they are cultivating, they give them loans. They bring their produce to their shop, they buy from their shops, and the shop owner gives them credit to uh, the, uh, go through the cultivating period and they give them the fertilizer or the money for the fertilizer and when the pedi is harvested they go to the pedi field with their vehicle and gunnies and everything and they beg them pay them in front of them even if there is some poor quality pedi they they may reduce the price a little but still they will buy it so the farmer benefits a lot uh, with the government it's either it's good I buy, the bad you go, or there is always mm. other kind of uh, yeah. bribery and things like that. Oh, that is a problem. You know, okay, people so, always yeah. fail so to this see is, these things. This is one of the ways that uh, Corona people or maybe yeah. Muslims in general did business around the country. Yeah. So what are some other strategies they did? You know, it's not, I'm just thinking, you know, it is not just easy to go to a village and open a shop. You have to know people, you know, the trust should be there and all that. Yeah, the, the opening opening is always happening like this because of a bad guy, a thug ruling, yeah. and the villagers have been suffering there. Yeah. And one courageous man goes and, you know, yeah. the, put that fellow down. Yeah. In the sense, don't kill, but, yeah, you know, of course, control, you know, control yeah, him yeah. some way or the other. Yeah. Then he starts a business. The villagers now can, can freely go and buy from them. Right. They also give them loans. Yeah and uh, reciprocity, right. you know, both right. the benefit. Right. So, right. and also the villages are relieved from the clutches of these thugs. Yes. Uh, that is how a lot of people have been able to establish businesses with uh, good uh, respectability. Yes. You know, they were really respected and uh, uh, because the villages have been benefiting yeah. from that. Yeah. 
So one of the drawbacks of this culture that we have had or even yeah. have is that men are yeah. uh, mostly outside. Say if you go to say Anuradhapura, if you had your shop, so when people went to Jaffna, it would take maybe like six months for these people to yeah. go and come yeah. one, one cycle. So yeah. maybe yes. just they, they have certain cycles. Yeah, cycles in the sense, uh, yeah, the, the, the thing is, uh, yeah, they will be away for six months, but the si other six months, they will they be will always at home and attending right. to that. Right. To tell you the example, this yeah. thing, my grandfather, mother, maternal grandfather, yeah. was not educated. He couldn't even read. Even the Quran, he learned from his wife, uh, and they bought a lot of properties. Here, he educated all the other children. His one son was... Uh, Chief clerk during the British time, uh, he studied in English. He became a chief clerk. So, so that's the clerk that, you mentioned. That, that uh, no, 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 clerk. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Another was a principal. My mother at that time, mm -hmm. I, I, my mother died when I was very, very young, and I have no memory of her. But I heard from our Sinhalese people who come home after that also, when I was a little grown up. Uh, they used to admire that she could speak Sinhalese very well. Uh, she could write and re re write in Sinhalese hmm. because the, uh, one of her brother he used to take her always when he is posted to outside uh, stations hmm. as teacher. She she was very small and he takes her hmm. and educate her. And and also another thing, another another myth that is being or another falsehood that is being said is that our, our ladies were illiterate. Right. Actually they were not illiterate, they were literate. But they had their own language. Yeah. Everybody, almost every woman can read Arabic Tamil. Arabic and there were a lot of books, stories they tell, they read stories, religious mm -hmm. books. Yeah. So the only thing is they didn't know Sinhali, so yes. Tamil alphabets they may not know. But yeah. they can write in Arabic. Yeah. Read, I, they, can, they can write Tamil in Arabic yeah. and read Tamil in Arabic. Yeah. In other words, they were quite intelligent. So, yeah. so I think it is wrong to say that they were yeah. illiterate. Yeah. I okay. could say my mother, uh, my, my grandmother also, uh, not my grandmother, my uh, elder auntie, mm -hmm. uh, they all sit together and read books. So tell me a bit about this Arabic Tamil, Arabic yeah. Tamil. Yes. Now, Arabic Tamil, like uh, any other language, mm -hmm. uh, when the Arabs settled in different areas, yeah. of course the local population would be speaking one language or the other. Right. In this instance, Tamil. Mm. But say when you take Malaya, it's Malay language. Mm. So, every almost all the languages where the Arabs went wrote the local language in the Arabic alphabet. Then they, there were a lot of adaptations to that. Mm. So, like, like you get Malay Rumi. Okay. Malay Rumi and Malay Javani. Okay. Now, Malay, Malay alphabet is written in Arabic alphabets. Okay. Just like that, Tamil language is written in, in Arabic, Arabic alphabets. Okay. There are so many languages that are being written right, like right, that. Right, right. So, that is how this language, and it was, and there were very good uh, literature, very good okay. literature, poetry. Yeah. And one instant from Akurana is yeah. one famous poet is, uh, that was written by Kasavat Ali Mappa, uh, okay. uh, that particular yeah, book. Yeah, okay. uh, when we were young, yeah. all the ladies in their bed together, like yeah. we, we have Bolo, yes. they have this and they recite this. It is okay. Tamil, Tamil poetry, very yeah. good poetry. Yeah. Uh, so some people took it as religious, it is not, it is cultural. It is cultural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably to, to begin with, you know, the idea would have been to impart the religious knowledge. Yeah. But yeah. it became cultural. There was yeah. some, uh, you know, the famous story I remember is Devu Varudhi. Some very adventure book, you know, it's like, uh, uh, I think probably it is from the, uh, the Arabian Nights, Arabian Nights oh, okay. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can remember these people were, uh, it's poetry, written mm -hmm. in very good poetry in Arabic Tamil. Mm -hmm. They used to sing that everybody sit there, you know, yeah, yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Who are some some other prominent people that uh, you have heard or uh, seen? There was a very prominent man. He came from Colombo. Yeah, he was doing very well to do. He was very well to do in Colombo. He ran a newspaper for community. 
uh, his his wife in Colombo was a very rich woman, landed proprietor, uh, and uh, he was a very close friend of Badiuddin Muhammad. And his wife was murdered by one of these tenants uh, when she oh. went to collect the rent. Oh my God! And he had uh, two ch two or three children. He came with them to Akura now. Mm -hmm. uh, English educated. Mm -hmm. uh, he was known as Clarker. He was known as Clarker, mm -hmm. as well as he was. Uh, his name was Hussein. Yeah. Uh, he was called Pachu Hussein because he was an ardent UNP. <laughs> Even though he was one of, Badiuddin was one of his best friends. Yeah. He was an ardent UNP. He okay. was very good with Dr. Khalil and all that. Yeah. And in fact, you know, there are certain things, changes he made in Akurana. Yeah. Uh, I remember we used to later on we used to move with him a lot because of his uh, revolutionary ideas yes, that yeah. they detected and he yeah. was giving guidance yeah. for us to, you know, how to set about yeah. doing things. So, you were about in your twenties and then he was in his... Yeah, he was in his very late ages, I, like he may 70s, be in maybe. the sixties. Okay. Sixties, at that time, okay. maybe sixties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, nice things he did was, uh, once uh, he was here, and he came here, he was helped a lot of villagers. Then, you know, because he could write in English and he had a typewriter, he would type everything uh, to the Queen or anybody, he would type and send letters. Yeah. So, people approached him because there was another lady here. Uh, he moved with my father very closely because they all supported him when he came here. Uh, and he was useful to them, you know, to communicate, I mean, write letters in English and all that official work and all that. And I can remember he was a clerk to the JP at that time, the, the Kalia. And uh, these people approached him and uh, because there was a lady here who married an Indian and she was taken to India. And uh, there her husband died and this woman was stranded. These could, people could not find her to bring her. So they didn't know what has happened to her. They approached him. He communicated with different people and got the woman back. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and, and people got together and married her off to him. Oh. <laughs> and had uh, That's interesting. Yeah, several children. And because uh, he lost his wife through his yes, parents. Yes, he came and for his yeah, wife yeah. and all that. Okay. And uh, this, uh, during the uh, during the war time, Second World War time, uh, there were troop, the British troops that were going around in uh, this thing. And this was, I don't know whether this was a single troop or whatever. Uh, they were singing the common, most popular, the army song. Tambiket of Pier, that song. Called Tambiket of Pier. That, that's a singular, that singular yeah. there's a song there, quite a popular one. Right. You know how people enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> they listen to that. So is it a racist song or just uh, kind of. Know, racism in a lighter sense. Casual the, racism. Casual racism. Okay. So this fellow. Hussein, mm. uh, his, he was later on known as J.P. Hussein because okay. Badiri Muhammad, he wouldn't go to anybody for help. Just directly so to Badiri Muhammad came, when he was minister, he came in search of him okay. and gave him a J.P. ship and went. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, because he used to write petitions and everything mm -hmm. and they have a need for, yeah. to get a J.P. He was signature, doing JP JP signature anyway. and all that. Yeah. So he said, you know, this is a very convenient yeah. thing, you <laughs> can help the people. You just become help. one. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, but even then, for to his face, he will oppose him. <laughs> right. He was, but he know him, who yeah. he is. Yeah. He won't budge. Yeah. So he stayed away, took his typewriter, and you know, wrote the letter to the queen about this uh, her her forces singing racist song. Ah, Come okay. Up here. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> the queen, the queen sent an apology letter to him. Right. And he had that uh, framed in his office. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at the letter from the yes. queen. Yeah, uh, like that. Uh, he guided our village leaders. Yes, he guided many of our village leaders in getting proper set up education, mm -hmm. sending there to send their children to yeah. good school, like yeah. Uh, yeah. about them admission in, in yeah. Colombo Zahira and places yeah. like that. Right. Uh, he helped the villagers a lot. You know, he right. was very keen to uh, for the village to get educated. Yes, so much so to get girls to go to school and study, yeah. when the central college was open and it was open for girls, mm -hmm. nobody would send the girls to the school. With reluctant. Reluctant to mm -hmm. send their to the boys' school. 
His daughter was studying at Gambar Sahib. Yeah. When it is the, one of the most popular yeah. Yeah. schools. A lot of people in, from yeah, Akhara now. Was was yeah. Mohammed was yeah. there. It was he Wadiri was the principal there. Yeah, yeah principal and mm -hmm. he was the founder, I think. Yeah. They told it was given yeah. to the government. Uh, and uh, he brought her all the way from here, or uh, there, to send to this school. To give an, make an, oh, an example, example to our oh, girls okay. to go. Right. Because nobody would take, send yes. their girls there. Yes. So that girl was going there all along. Yeah. Then others started following. Okay. Okay. So that okay. kind of uh, revolutionary yeah. and also uh, leaves the example that is yeah. going to serve. Yeah. Uh, did a lot of things like that. Yeah. So what are some of, some other interesting characters like that uh, mm -hmm. from Akrona as you can uh, record? As I said, Noor Muhammad uncle, he was the most uh, popular person among the ordinary educated people and all that. And he had a habit of, you know, in the later, when he's retired age, my friends used to tell me that engineer, someone related this to me once. You know, he, he would just take his umbrella and he will start walking from his house just along the road, but wherever he wants to go. Uh, and uh, that was a time when boys were with lot of reluctance starting to wear long trousers. Fifties. Fifties. Yeah. It should be the fifties, yeah, yeah. yes. So they were wearing sarans? So mostly school they went in shorts. Oh, ah okay. School and, shorts. And, and yeah. once they grow, yeah. they have to wear long trousers. Yes. Now when they wear long trousers and if they go out, people speak to them in English. I mean, not right. in the village, yeah, can yeah. you anybody? Okay. Yeah. Even if they don't, yeah. you know, boys are reluctant. Yeah. Now, they, they boys go and wait on the bus stand, yeah. and then no more uncle, if he walks down, yeah. he will talk to them in English. He had a habit, whether yeah. they are a student, he's a young fellow, he speaks speaker. to them in English. Yeah. His Tamil is very good, okay. very powerful, very good yeah. Tamil, yeah. but he still he will speak to them in yeah. English. He was wearing longs or? He wears longs. Okay. He had wear, wear, wear yeah. longs, yeah, yeah. The, those yeah, days, yeah. Kacheri longs, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's Later on he was wearing sarong. Yeah. When he grew okay. older, he okay. was wearing sorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, our first memories were him always uh, seeing him yeah. in longs. Mm -hmm. So when we got the these bell bottoms, yes, yeah, when we got the bell bottoms, right, yeah. first yeah. time yeah. Yes. when it came, mm -hmm. so yeah. we used to say the kacheri mamala kalasan. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. He was wearing bell bottoms before. Long that. ago, <laughs> a lot long ago. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, right. So that's so yeah. so boy, he, he will speak them in mm -hmm. someone who is saying. If anybody, if the boys see him coming, yeah. all the fellows will vanish from the bus holes. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, because okay. if he come in, they will get <laughs> speaking English. Okay. His name is Abdul Qadar, yes, he is yeah. Mr. Engineer Zubay's yeah. uh, father. father. Mm. Uh, he was uh, supposed master in the Akuna town, yeah. and he was very much involved in the social work and all that. He maintained by almost by himself with the help of only there were only one or two shops. My father and one or two, the shop cutter, yeah. two, three shops were there. With their help, they maintained that must throughout. It was his building. So and this uh, Takia. Takia, yeah. Takia, mm -hmm. in that building. They told they gave buffed it. Yeah. He could speak English. Okay. He could speak English. They educated all his children okay. very well. So people re talked to him to translate uh, 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 documents? Uh, and yes. Things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you when you, yes, that's true. But more than that, when you say that, I remember you were in Dunyavilla Road. Yeah. You grew up there. Yeah. I have heard about this character called Parit. <laughs> Pula Parit, yes, is another man of this nature. I told you who went and cleared the towns and who right. who, who did very yeah. well. Who he was in. Person? He was. Uh, I think he was in. Yeah, Kurula, he was a very close friend of Kurula, Minister Kurula. Yeah. Kurula minister, former yeah. minister oh. uh, in the UNB uh, uh, government in the 60s, I 60s, think, 60s yeah. and 70s okay. maybe. Kurula was a famous minister. From Matale or? No, no, from uh, one of the northern electorates, yeah. uh, Horopatan. Ah, okay. Horopatan, okay. yes, okay. Horopatan. Yeah. He was, uh, he had established himself in Horopatan. Also by, also by his uh, courage. Okay, the, the story you talked about, how these people go and settle. Settled, yeah. He's one of them. He, was, he brought in several industries also. He, he brought in a business of uh, bead wrapping yeah. and poultry farming. Right. And he started a small hatchery 
Oh, yeah. No, that he did. There he has been doing very well. So this happened in Horopatana. Horopatana. From Horopatana he started in Akurana. Akurana as well. Yes. Okay. So he's later on he he left Horopatana and came here. Yeah. But uh, I can I know that Hurula had a very good uh, respect for him. Yeah. Probably he has helped him in a big way. Right. To to get elected. Right. Uh, because Farid was a popular man there. Yeah. So he had uh, even single vote, single. Uh, Loyalty, he can command. Right, right. Uh, so, so he has helped Guru with yeah. the single yes, yeah. yes, okay. Okay. Uh, Why I say that is, he after coming here, he and he thought he is the king of uh, Dunyaro. Right, right, right. So he was. So he had his rules on the Dunyaro. Right. He, he started say, to establish rules. Yeah, rules. So when people break this, yeah. Normally outsiders yeah. come and break this, like he's smoking during the. Okay. Ramazan and things like that. Okay, you know, a small social uh, violations. Violations. And so he, he couldn't stand complain. policemen. Okay, police because people went well, and complained the police, yeah. and then police came to kind of check on him, yeah. and then he went against yeah. the police. So the rule was that the policemen can't come on the little road. <laughs> that is rule. <laughs> yes. Okay. So once there were two police fellows who yeah. just walked in, you know, unknown about anything. At the traffic cops. Yeah. And uh, the bad thing was, you know, he he assaulted them. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, uh, that has happened to about two, two, three times. Okay. Few happened. times. Yeah. Yes. So assaulted them. These yeah. fellows didn't know what happened. You know, all of a sudden, like a police this fellow <laughs> barged him. Yeah. And uh, they ran off and then came to our shop. You know, only our shop had the telephone. Yeah. Post office and our shop. Yeah. They called and then. Uh, they went and uh, a huge force of uh, policemen. Yeah. Can be. Yeah. What was that? Uh, what yeah. they don't know. All. Oh. Because he, after doing that, he was in heights in the jungle. Oh, okay. At the top of the list. Earlier he was very good, but yeah. when this problem came, yeah. Uh, so this kind of uh, incidents started happening. They were caught. Yeah. They beat him. Yeah. You know, so thoroughly we could see. Yeah. Uh, but so you are. Uh, yeah. You are. Then that fellow just gets up and goes. Yeah, he can withstand any kind yes, of, yes. Uh, you know. I think the, he had some art of, you know, withstanding yeah. all this. Okay. He would just sort of curl himself like a, like a barbata. What barbata, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Curl himself and he would just take uh, roll and yeah. take everything. We were watching. Yeah. We were, so you were, I, 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 I have seen this, you know, once he was caught and brought to the group. Yeah. So you were they seeing put, this. Yes, yes, yeah. right. Put in the van and they yeah. were having yeah. the, trembling him yeah. with all the boots and everything, yeah. hitting them with the yeah. thing. But we but thought, uh, you know, he's going to die, but next day he is hell and hearty. <laughs> and and Hurula calls the police and they release him. Oh, okay. Okay. He had Hurula behind him. Yes. Okay. Then uh, then he passed uh, later. Later on, yeah. he He lived a yeah. long time and he passed. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? Razik Farid. Yeah. Razik Farid. He's from he Kalambu. From Kalambu. He had a very good connection here. Yeah, Takurana. Uh, yeah. He yeah. comes to do, in fact, you know, he struggled a lot to get this girl's school started. Balika. Balika. Okay. Before me. Yeah. Before my time, but uh, this is what my father sent yeah. for. Because I know later on he comes to my uncle's house. Yeah. Uh, they were very, very, very close because yeah. they were good admirers of Razik for him. Okay. So he comes and he stays there. Yeah. Uh, ah, to what, the extent to yeah, staying. Yeah, yeah okay. staying. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, his meals and people yeah. come and meet him there for, for various political reasons. Uh, yeah, come in and he fell out because I don't know whether you remember the Dahanayake period. Dahanayake period yeah, yeah, after yeah. after yeah. Bandaranayake died. Yeah, Dahanayake became the prime minister. Okay, and he formed the caretaker cabinet. Dahanayake formed Dahanayake was a, a sort of a, was a single is minister mm -hmm. for the. Non-Muslim minister who was most popular with the Muslims, because oh. uh, in edu when he was education minister, because Muslim education was very backward, he brought in made lot of changes to help the Muslims. 
He brought from Gaul. Yeah. In Gaul also, he won mostly with the Muslim wars. Yes. And he did a lot of Muslim service too. Yeah. I think. But he, he his interest was genuine. He yeah. Saw it was genuine. Muslim education yes, yes, is backwards. Yes, yes. Let's do he, something he, about it. He did a lot of help. Yeah. Help and uh, started schools for Muslims. Yeah. That were gave teaching appointment. Yeah. Uh, because they have a, there was a problem of uh, Muslim school saving too many uh, non-Muslim teachers. Yeah. Mostly okay. from the Tamil community. Yeah. So there was a feeling that you know those people were not genuinely helping the Muslims. Okay. Or maybe somewhere like that. Yeah. But anyway, that that feeling was there among yeah. the Muslims. So Muslims wanted Muslim teachers. Okay. But then there weren't enough Muslim teachers. Yeah. So he gave appointment to Muslim girls who were referred in the whole level and allowed them to sit for the exam and pass while serving as a teacher. Right. There were a lot of uh, girls who were appointed at that time like that. Uh, and for various reasons he was well liked. In his cabinet, mm -hmm. there were seven Muslim ministers. You know, there was a practice, almost a custom, unwritten custom, that Muslims were given only one ministry. Uh, you can't appoint as many ministers as you want now that, like that. Uh, you can only... Uh, there were 16 ministers, I think. It's the cabinet. You can't, it, you can't increase that. Uh, you can't play with the constitution the way you want. Everybody. And also there, the, the prime minister has to be the foreign minister. And all the rules were there. So, always Muslims were given a ministry. In the UMB, it was always a labor ministry. In fact, you know, once uh, this, uh, when Hamid won, and when we became a senior member in the parliament, uh, he should be appointed a minister, uh, M.H. Muhammad or him. So it, it became sort of uh, most uh, uh, mostly expected that Hamid should be given a minister. He was offered the labor ministry, which uh, M.H. Muhammad always holds, and Hamid refused, refused to accept it. He says, you know, the labor ministry is not something you can do anything to the community. Yeah, Rasik Farid, one of the genuine uh, Muslim leaders, I would say. Unfortunately, he had to, because Hamid was very popular and ex ex expected, accepted here as the local, uh, local, local representative. Mm -hmm. uh, Razik Fadid was forced to at least uh, tokenly oppose him because he was uh, a prominent member in the PP. Uh, that is Dawudu Dhanayaka's party, mm -hmm. that was contested. So he fielded a prominent, well-loved Muslim person in Akurana, who is uh, Mansur. Mansur, or the advocate Mansur, he was the principal at the Azhar when it was English media. And most of the educated people here were his students, like uh, Mr. Gafur, Sharif, B. Sharif and all these people. Uh, so, Razi Farid had to field him. So, that be, made him little unpopular. Tell us about this Pingaoya, what it no. used to be like the, in the 50s. Pingaoya was bad even in those days. Right. Uh, I can remember a uh, headline in the evening observer once Akurana <laughs> River runs red. Right. This was in the 50s? Yes. F should be, yeah, it was 50s. Uh, 50s, late 50s. Yeah. When, when, when we could read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. early 60s. Yeah. Uh, because there were a lot of uh, uh, abattoirs along the roadside. Right. Uh, I remember the incident, you know, we as young students, uh, we get together and go and set fire to these abattoirs. Right. Because they just come and, you know, erect the abattoirs by the riverside. Without yeah. permission and things like that, just people yeah, do their don't own. Don't know whether they yeah. go, anybody can take permission now yeah. in yeah. Sri Lanka for anything. Yeah. No. Yeah. Even, Even now, now the buildings are coming yeah. up uh, to see yeah. that all the buildings have permission. Yeah, okay, but we yeah. don't know who gave the permission. Yeah, yeah. who gave the permission. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> as young boys, we get together and go and set fire to these things. Right. And these abattoirs are a big problem. You know, Partly there are points are where smelly. you can't stand the smell of this. Yeah. Uh, Protein, yeah. protein bones, yeah. and also the they collect this uh, the, the the blood, yeah. and uh, open it to the river once in a way. 
and that is why the, the headline rain mm -hmm. Akurna River runs red. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that problem has been there since then, but it yeah. wasn't this bad yeah. because there was enough rain and yeah. always it get washed off and the yeah. river is clean. Yeah. People used to bathe. Yeah. And it was so nice, you know, that uh, near near where the uh, market now is. Yeah, yeah. The river below that was a very vast area, mm -hmm. very rocky bed, rock mm -hmm. bed area, very vast. The rocks everywhere and uh, the water flows all over. Smoothly, yeah. And uh, our ladies go to bathe there. Yeah. And you know, the, with those uh, rocks yeah. formation, they can easily wash their clothes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so nice, mm. clear water yeah. and all that. So much so, we used to call that as a joke, you know, we used to call that the Mami Beach. It's the Miami Beach. Miami Beach. <laughs> Miami it's the Beach. Mami, ma Mami is there. <laughs> so okay. we say Mami Beach. <laughs> it, was, so it was such a beautiful, beautiful place. place. Yes. Okay. Uh, river was uh, really good and uh, we all fish. The, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. my wife has gone fishing. fishing. We of course fish on the yeah. uh, other river, the Union yeah. Road. The Union Road. But that, yeah. uh, the Your wife people, yes. from here. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. We, uh, even that river, we, yeah. we go along the river. Yeah. We even walk up to the source of the river. Very right. interesting. The beginning. Walk. Yeah, the beginning. So that's in Dunivila somewhere. Dunivila somewhere. Right. Yeah, we would walk all yeah. the way. Yeah. Uh, very nice uh, to right. walk. Right. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and also, this river flooding now, yeah. whatever the official theories are, yeah. some of that may be scientifically correct, but I can't, you know, it's difficult to think. Now mm -hmm. they say this river has not filled up. No. I, when I was in the estate uh, at that time I used to travel the, when the dam was being built. Mm -hmm. uh, recently the, the building opposite us, that tall building mm -hmm. opposite us, when they started to erect that uh, mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. uh, that will be about uh, 20 years after the, 20-25 years after the dam was put up. Mm -hmm. uh, they were digging in the river mm -hmm. to put their pylons. Mm -hmm. uh, the post to mm -hmm. all the way. Then, when they dug up about uh, six, seven feet, mm -hmm. they were rusted, uh, worn out uh, these barrels mm -hmm. buried down there. Okay. You know, they also are the ones where in our days, mm -hmm. when there is a long drought, mm -hmm. when there is no water, no water flow in the river, mm -hmm. people go and bury these half drums into the into the sand mm -hmm. and dig it up. Mm -hmm. It's like a well. Then the water collects and ah, they bathe. Ah, okay, okay. You know, such a such a barrel was there. Yeah. About uh, about uh, about at least eight to ten feet deep. Okay, okay. That means that was the riverbed at that time. Okay. So that much is filled up. Yes. That is one of the main reasons. Yes. And also the another ex another evidence is you now there is a bridge across the Dunula River mm. on the main road, mm. the Hospital Junction River. Mm. When we were small, mm. the, the, the logs were taken, carried by the animals, the mm. elephants. Mm. These elephants were not allowed to walk and damages the road mm. the, to break the yeah. ro logs. Yeah. So the mahouts, they come along the river, right, right, dra right. Dragging, the, dragging the logs. Okay, yeah. And they just uh, go under the bridge mm. Mm. without any difficulty. Yeah. Now even a, not even a kettle may be able to go, it's only about four or five feet clearances yeah. there. Okay. Uh, so these things have happened for yeah. the reason, all, mm. mainly because of, I, I think one, one thing is the river gets polluted because the buildings are there. Yeah. And uh, those buildings should be, you know, in fact, you know, we drew up when we were just out of school, mm -hmm. we drew up planes to the, the, the other side of the river, mm. But this completely barren, like nothing is built there. Mm. Uh, this side, the town was expanding. We expected the town to expand. Mm. Even in those days, there were no public convenience for visitors to Akurana. Mm. They had to use this, uh, our Tekka. Mm. Even the townspeople were using the Tekka. I told you about uh, mm. Engineer Zubay's father was uh, mm. maintaining. Mm. So we suggested that, you know, to put a one or two bridges mm. across the river from the lower down section mm. and mm. to have a parallel road on the other side. Mm. So, which could have been very easily done mm. because the land price was very low. Mm. Mm. And we also suggested that yeah. if the owners feel that the compensation they get 
from the government is not enough. Mm. Uh, the the people in Akurana can, yes, top it up with, yeah. uh, with a collection from Akurana. Mm. Mm. And if we had done that, yeah. the owners of the land, mm. they would have benefited many times. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have, the price uh, price of the land would have yeah. multiplied. Tell me about just one piece of advice to the current uh, generation from your time. So, times are so different, but is there anything that the new generation can, can learn from the past. Problem with Muslim community is, as far as I know, uh, we give first priority for money, not for education. And also, Akurana, mostly the Akurana boys, uh, they only try to go to the top, you know, either become an engineer or a doctor or something like that. Those who can't achieve that, there are so many middle level jobs. Uh, that they can do and do well. But out of the children, mostly they don't sort that. The moment they miss that out, they go for business. Go for foreign land and all that. And of course, they earn money. But then, you know, respectability and usefulness to the community and all that stuff was important. And uh, sometimes uh, they sell their last properties and go. Sometimes they make it or sometimes they don't make it. But, but mostly, they are enterprising, that is uh, something that you would admire. They know how to somehow go and survive. Uh, this is one thing they are missing. But I, my policy with my children was allowing them the freedom to choose whatever they want. Right. And uh, even education, I, I didn't insist they are doing being on top in the class, so long as they are studious. Uh, so I allowed them to find their own ways. Yeah. And I think that uh, pays off. But then, you know, when you do that, you know, there are, is, uh, there are periods of uh, real anxiety, mm -hmm. whether they are going to make it or not. But then ultimately, it works. Uh, I don't know, different parents <coughs> might think. And also, the parents, mm -hmm. there are a lot of wealthy people. Uh, instead of trying to build empires for their children, they, they should make money and do that. But then they should invest uh, more in the children's education. You will briefly mention about your children? Yes, as you said, uh, I gave a lot of freedom in their mm -hmm. choice studies. Even when the teachers mm -hmm. complained, I didn't bother because I knew that they are they are always going after something. Mm -hmm. They were not wasting time mm -hmm. going somewhere, I know that kind of thing. Right. I put them in the English medium because yeah. I knew that there is more scope mm -hmm. for them to blossom in that uh, yeah. with English from early early day English. So, of course, uh, when they grow up, when they go into mm -hmm. the, work and when they don't go follow the beaten track and just go and get a salary and do that, you know, none of my children are bent on that. Right. So there could be periods of anxiety, yeah. but uh, uh, I think that has paid off. I, I don't know whether it will work to everybody. Uh, yeah. So one of your children completed a PhD in... Uh, uh, yes, he's, uh, he did this uh, computer science degree. Yeah. He got the uh, last supper, yeah. then he did uh, engineering. Yeah. That also shows his uh, free choice yeah. of this thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he will study things that are not normally set in a curriculum. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he got uh, engineering, he got first class honors. Mm -hmm. uh, then he was given an award to do a PhD. Yeah. Uh, that also he chose a very tough, uh, uh, not an easy PhD. Yeah. Uh, very, very very one. little, very little research field of uh, yeah. the cavity. He, he was also, you know, some people call, call him a cavitation also. Okay. Uh, this topology and all that. He oh. also writes. Yeah. He likes to write. And from early days he used to write. Okay. The other person is more on a, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. he started this and then he did the, the PhD. He, two years and then he took a year leave because he wanted to do his research. Mm. That also, he went into that because of the need that he felt. Mm. When he was researching topology, mm. he found that there is so much data and the mm. present computing powers are not enough to right. uh, analyze this. Right. So he thought, first I'll find the computing, computing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. find the com develop the computing and yeah. then I'll do this. Yeah. And that is how he went and started this company. Okay. Yeah, so it is, uh, called uh, this uh, cloud computing. Yeah. 
so they can get some supercomputing powers. Yes. And at that time, there was a big argument in the in the young scientist and mm -hmm. the new new scientist, mm -hmm. and uh, he was arguing with a lot of uh, established scientists that uh, mm -hmm. they were saying that uh, this is not possible. Mm -hmm. uh, the argument was that uh, at very high speeds, you mm -hmm. can't have exact computing. Right. So he said. Uh, you can, and mm -hmm. he established that in Haiti. Mm -hmm. But now, now that pro program is becoming very popular. All the big mm -hmm. companies and mm -hmm. even NASA is looking into that. Right. Other uh, son, he worked for some time, then established his firm yeah. uh, of consulting, and also he does it in a different way. He found that consultation alone is of no use mm -hmm. because you, you give you give the ideas and do the consultation. The company is not equipped to carry it on, mm -hmm. make the changes. Yeah. So he takes the company, gives mm -hmm. them the consultation as well as the resultants. Mm -hmm. He trains the resultant, because there's an ongoing mm -hmm. uh, result uh, training, okay. and put his resultants in the company mm -hmm. to make these changes. Mm -hmm. Because the people he say who are working there are used to their own system. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they are involved in their day-to-day -day work and they, they don't mm -hmm. have the time to do any changes. Okay. That is his policy. Uh, it's working. Okay. It's, look, and daughter was working and now she's doing her own uh, event management company. Okay. Great. But the Mansur, <laughs> so much contributions, uh, so much memories that you contributed to, you know, building this program. So what we call is the Visdemi. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure also to